This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is the new DJI Air 3. I'm really excited about this drone. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be in the Air series. It actually looks like one from the Mavic series, but it's smaller, it's lighter, and supposedly it's just as powerful. It's combining a lot of the best features from both the Mini and the Mavic series. And because I know a lot of you who are watching are photo and video people, I know that's what you guys really wanna hear today. So we're gonna get into that first and foremost, but let's talk about the size and the weight because that's where every member of the Air series excels. They're quite powerful powerful, but they are smaller than Mavic's. This one, although technically it's called an Air, to me it feels like it's kind of a tiny version of what should belong to the Mavic series because until I flew it, I was highly skeptical that a lot of these features were going to be as impressive as they are. Now the Air 3 features a dual camera system, which is similar to the Mavic 3 that I own. I immediately thought this wasn't going to be as powerful as my Mavic 3 because I'm skeptical of the motors, I'm skeptical of the transmission, I'm just overall very skeptical, but until I flew it today, boy, did this blow my mind. So let's get into the specs. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. So it has both a 24 millimeter f1.7 and a 70 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now you'll notice that the 70 millimeter lens is the same that you would find on the Mavic 3 Pro, which is very impressive considering this small size. And they both have a one by 1.3 inch CMOS 48 megapixel sensor, which is a slightly larger sensor than what you find on the Air 2S. Both the wide angle and the tele lens support 4K at 100 100 frames per second and support 10-bit D log M and HLG recording. And just like the mini series, it shoots vertically up to 2.7K resolution. When it comes to burst shooting, that 48 megapixels does drop down to 12 megapixels, but I'm not necessarily using that feature very often and 12 megapixels is still okay. No, it's not 48, but maybe that's just something to keep in mind. You've got all the same photo modes. You've got your 4K time-lapse, your 2.7K vertical time-lapse, your H HDR Ultra HD panorama photos, and of course, hyperlapses. Now, those hyperlapses are improved somewhat. They should be synthesizing faster in the air for you, so that will speed up your entire process and you can get back to shooting even faster. You can also still shoot at night. I have yet to try that myself on this, but you bet I will. And it also has eight gigabytes of internal storage. Now, what's new about the drone itself? Something everyone can appreciate with a drone is it not crashing. And this is something that's supposed to be possible with this, with the new omnidirectional binocular vision system or APIS, APIS, APIS 5.0. So essentially what they've done is they've added fisheye lenses to the sensors at the front and of the back of the drone. And underneath there is a new infrared sensor and a binocular vision sensor. Basically, more sensing, wider sensing. You have way more sensors everywhere. I actually tried to fly this into a tree today and it wouldn't. So it seems to be working quite well. And that's something we can all appreciate as, you know, it's hard not to run into stuff when you're only looking forwards on a drone. You need to make sure you're always turning it all the way around, making sure you're not backing up into anything, but this new system should help with that. <laughs> 
So because of this improved omnidirectional binocular vision system, return to home is now improved. So when the lighting conditions are adequate and it will actually let you know when the lighting conditions aren't adequate because that has happened to me in my testing, the drone will plan a efficient and safe route home so that you too can fly your drone once again on a day that is a good day because you can fly your drone again. Okay, moving on. Other than the specs, other than its ability to not crash. We want to know how long can we keep this thing in the air. Compared to the 2S, you're getting 48% more flying time. So you get 46 minutes of flying time with this, and that's actually three minutes longer than with the Mavic 3. And in terms of distance, you get 32 kilometers, which is double what you could get with the 2S and still more than with the Mavic 3. And finally, when it comes to wind resistance, which I feel like is something is often overlooked by the more beginner, intermediate, maybe amateur drone pilot is just making sure that your drone doesn't blow away. I have bared witness to someone lose their drone because it has literally not been able to combat the wind and it is tragic. Do not let it happen to you. So that's why I've always opted for drones in the Mavic series because they have really strong motors. This drone actually has the exact same wind speed resistance as the Mavic 3. You're getting 12 meters per second of wind resistance. The batteries. <laughs> this part's pretty cool. One of these, it does take 60 minutes to charge. That is a while. But charge them overnight, cry me a river, get more batteries, figure it out. They last a long time. 60 minutes of charging for 46 minutes of flight time, I don't think is that bad. It's fine, we're moving on from it. Something that's really cool is this new charging hub. I mean, this happens to everyone. You're flying, you don't wanna fly your drone back on 0% battery, so there's like 10, sometimes 20% left. So all you do is press and hold the power button and it's gonna start this reserve charging sequence. So it's going to take all the remaining battery from two of these batteries and transfer it into one so that you can actually get a little more flying time left. So what you do is you take all your 10 and 20% batteries, you plug them in here. You don't need to have a power outlet available. You can be in the field shooting whatever you're shooting, flying wherever you're flying. And I think that is just the freaking smartest thing they've ever come up with because I find it infuriating when all my batteries aren't completely dead, but I don't have enough to necessarily fly one of them. So now you've got efficient charging and efficient use of all of your power. Now the controller. <laughs> We're using the new RC2 controller today, and I think this is fantastic. A little out of frame there. Like here? Throw it right up to the camera. You know when they used to? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so this is the RC2 controller that we've been using today, and these controllers are fantastic because you can connect any of your drones to one controller. Gone are the days of having to use your phone to be able to monitor your drone, and it's the most inconvenient thing ever. I mean, it, it was kind of cool at the time, but the novelty is over when you realize then your battery on your phone is dying all day long and you can't fly your drone because your phone battery is dying. That's just silly. And I also love the idea of having one controller if you have multiple drones. I do have the luxury and I, I don't really want to call it a burden, but yeah, the luxury of needing one controller for multiple drones because I have the luxury of having multiple drones. It's a good thing. It's just a lot of stuff to have. So to only have one controller for all of them is kind of nice. You'll notice the main difference between this and the RC1 is the little antennas up here and that's what's contributing to that max flight distance. So we've got two transmitters on this and four receivers. So that's also why you're getting a much better connection with this. And you're actually receiving a feed that is 1080p. Yeah. And there's an SD card slot at the bottom where you can be recording this capture. So at least if you do lose your drone, you're not completely losing everything, okay? This has a lot of other cool features on it, like screen recording. I do love that because it's allowing the ability for me to show you what I'm shooting. And that's kind of neat. The actual max transmission distance for this is 20 kilometers. You've got two custom buttons on the back. It's still got a touch screen. You've got your joysticks. You have your cinematic mode, normal sport mode. Everything is pretty much the same otherwise, but it is really nice to have a dedicated screen. And in my experience flying it over the last couple days, I really have noticed that the connection is really, really good. I worry a lot less about my drone getting lost or when I'm doing hyperlapses and it's just flying and doing its own thing. I can monitor the connection in the top right corner of the screen and just change the antennas when I need to and see if it's going a bit too far. But I actually never lost connection on this 
this, uh, at least in flying it in the last two days. It is a pretty unobstructed area. We're flying over a lake at my cottage, but I was actually sitting inside a vehicle when flying this with the controller, and I still didn't lose connection when shooting this hyperlapse of the lighthouse. So that is something to be said. I've never experienced that so far with an air series drone, and that's really exciting to me that something this small can have this great of a connection, be this powerful in strong winds, and have great quality footage and photos. So I know it can be really overwhelming when you're trying to decide what drone to get. There are so many different options out there. We've just added one more. So if you wanna see a little buying guide, a little comparison between the Mini, the Air 3, the Mavic 3 Classic, and the Mavic 3 Pro, we're gonna have some incredible footage shot with each one of these, and I'll let you know which one would be best for you, or for who, or for what kind of photo video human, or just person who wants to screw around with the drone, but this would be kind of an expensive thing to screw around with. So anyways, I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed your little teaser at seeing some of the footage shot with this, and I'll see you next week, and maybe we'll be in Iceland. No! And a volcano. Holy fucking shit. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe.